Today on a special rambling about cars, we've talked about tires. Now we're going to talk about choosing the right ones and a whole lot more. And we have some help from Tire Rack. Yes, we have a very special guest from Tire Rack with us today. And there's also a new Maserati convertible. That sounds very interesting. We're going to touch on that just a little bit. So without further ado, it is podcast time. I am Christopher Smith, and it's time to toss it to Mr. Chris Bruce. And we do have a very special guest with us today. We do. We are delighted to have with us Matt Edmonds from Tire Rack. Matt, you are an executive vice president from there. If my research is correct, you specialize in marketing. And if my research research is correct, you have been there since 1988. So you are closing in on 35 years in the tire business and the tire selling business. And Tire Rack is so much more than that. Um, but I, I had to look right before uh, we started the show. The tires on both my wife's car and my car were from Tire Rack. And I'm pretty sure my rear windshield wiper was also from Tire Rack. So <laughs> you guys are great. You've been around for quite a while. And so it's it's very nice to have you on the show. So welcome. Um, and just to kick things off, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, how you got started at Tire Rack, and you know why you've stayed at the company for so long? <laughs> yeah. Well, let me let me just say thank you, gentlemen, both uh, Smith and Bruce, for having me on. Um, Absolutely. It's uh, it's been an interesting journey. I mean, uh, the truth is, Tyrek is a family business. I'm an outlaw in the family, as we say. We don't have any more family. <laughs> um, but uh, Tyrek was started back in 1979 by a fellow outlaw, Mike Joins. Uh, at the encouragement of our, our father-in-law, Peter Veldman, uh, mm -hmm. who is a Dutch immigrant and American entrepreneur. Um, business started out as a converted gas station in Indianapolis, Indiana. That's awesome. Uh, 38th and Post out on the east side of, of Indy. Um, mm -hmm. And grew from there. And, and Mike was one that uh, was a real car enthusiast. I mean, not many guys went to IU back in the mid '70s and drove an Opel Mana. Um, nice. Oh, no, they and, didn't. <laughs> and he uh, he was buying all of his tires at that time mail order because that was the only way he got specialty tires. And mm -hmm. uh, it took anywhere from two weeks to two months to get your tires because people were great marketing them from, from you know, across the water. Um, he convinced our father-in-law that there was a tire, the Phoenix Stallflex, that was the hot autocross tire at the time. There was a whopping six different sizes available. He said <laughs> if we had 20 of each size in stock so that when people called, we could put take their order, make sure they got the right size, told them how they could use the tire, shipped it that day so that they got it in one to five days, no matter where they were at in the country. I mean, that'd be nice. a wonderful thing. And that was the beginning of Tire Rack, uh, 40, <laughs> almost over 43 years ago. Um, that's, wow. that's awesome. And let me just say, we are three minutes, 30 seconds into the program. We already have a mention of autocross. This is going to be, this is going to be such a good, <laughs> such a good conversation. And we're well, so, uh, Smith, Go before ahead. we talk about the new car that we want to talk about, I immediately have to ask. So Phoenix, that's a brand I've never heard of. Where was that from in Europe? Do you know? You know, it's a good question. I don't. And I should okay. know. <laughs> no, you, know. Ah, it, it's clearly not a brand that exists anymore. It's just curious. I've never no. heard of that brand before. So I was curious. No, it was it was the hot autocross tire and, and was replaced by the Yokohama A001R. So, yeah, so yeah, no, but, uh, but I, uh, I, in my previous life, prior to being a tire guy, was an architect um, oh, okay. and was persuaded by my father-in-law to join the business rather than pursue a job out of town. Um, and I was employee number 24 and, um, <laughs> and started working on marketing after I spent a couple of years in the warehouse, you know, learning from the ground up. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, at that time I was a one man marketing team. Uh, now we have a marketing team that uh, is in excess of 50 plus people. Oh, wow. So cool. I, I've, I've been on the marketing side. That's a big team. 
That's I mean, well, that's that that's a that's a that's an impressive team. You know, when we used to when when I first started, it was cutting and pasting little pictures of wheels and tires, you know, and ads for the back of Auto Week and Road and Track, and Car and Driver, Motor Trend. That's where I first um, saw Tire Rack. Like you know, yeah. I, I was born yeah. in '85, but I was still looking at you know car magazines in the mid '90s. And it, like you know, the internet kind of it existed, but not really. But that's where I first saw Tire Rack. Yeah. Yeah, so that was that was the beginning, and, and it's uh, it's been a wonderful, wonderful uh, ride ever since then. We've uh, been very blessed, and uh, business can really continue to just grow. Not you know, not one of the uh, skyrocketing trajectories that you normally find. It's very consistent growth, and uh, you know, we've taken our retail business to to also become wholesale business. Uh, and um, you know it's it's been it's been a good ride, and and uh, you know testing became an important part of our differentiation. Uh, mm-hmm. You know we had salespeople on the phone, and you know the tire manufacturers would come to us and do ride and drives. You know when they introduced a new tire. Mm-hmm. Well, we saw some of the games that got played to make a tire look like it was the better performer always, and decided we just need to do our own testing program, and uh, that was the beginning and. And uh, it's so important to us that we have a test track, uh, as some people say, in our backyard. And we beg to defer with them that uh, it's so important to us, it's actually in our front yard. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Right here in South Bend. So if you've been, been here or you drive by on the Indiana Toll Road, uh, I-80, 90, mm-hmm. uh, you'll see our test track. And, uh, you know, as you said, Smith, uh, you were here at Autocross. And... Uh, on the weekends, uh, really from about the middle of April, as soon as the snow melts, uh, through the mid-October time frame, uh, almost every weekend there's a car club on our test track uh, using it for autocross. So, I mean, I think, I mean, I think that's just the top right there. You have a tire company. You obviously are catering to enthusiasts, hosting autocrosses. I mean, if and from a business standpoint, hey. Come out here, burn off the tires. We got more waiting for you. That's I mean, exactly the, what I was thinking. From the business, oh, knock it out. But, burn while you, you learn. You need that, yeah. that extra half second of time. We can get that for you. We can get that. <laughs> See, are you familiar with Lane Automotive up in uh, in Southwest Michigan? Uh, yes, they, they, they actually have an event here. Okay. Every year. Okay. Yeah. I, I used to have a, well, I, I do have a friend that used to work over at lane and we would do some events over there at car clubs in, uh, it, for the folks listening, this is, this is a little town called water in Michigan in, in the Southwest corner of Michigan, right off I 94. When you go by, there's this big building and this huge parking lot and you walk inside and it's just like, it's, it's paradise for a car person because, uh, gosh, we did an event there one time and I had a Taurus show. You couldn't, you couldn't find any parts, any upgrade parts for a Taurus show, except at lane, you walk into the showroom and like, oh yeah, you want, you want a K and N for the show? Yeah. We, we got that in stock. It's like, what? Nobody has that in stock. So yeah, just, just a great area. Um, I, I, I went to a, to school in, at Western Michigan university, Kalamazoo, and I got into the car scene in that area. And uh, yeah, I mean, the, the events at Tire Rack. That's why I'm really stoked to have you here. I want to hear more. And I know everybody uh, wants to hear more about the uh, Tire Rack and just some of the things that are going on there. Let's first, though, let's just touch on this for a few minutes. We got to because... hit one bit of news and then it's going to be tires for the rest of the show. Um, but um, we got to hit one. It, it debuted today. We want to hit it real quick. I promise for all of our, our listeners, we're going to keep it short and then we're going to get to the interview. But when it Maserati comes out with a new convertible, I, and technically it is a new convertible, it's the Maserati MC20 no, it's totally a new convertible CLO. That's what we've that's what we've decided that that it's called, right? CLO, three syllables. That sounds very Italian. Yep. And they, I they mean, it's call it Cielo. G- oh, oh Cielo. Cielo. That's beautiful. Cielo. Yeah. That's even more Italian. See, I've, I'm notorious, Matt. I am notorious for mispronouncing everything on this program so <laughs> i'm i'm gonna call it cello 
<laughs> anyway, let's get to the de- let's get to the deets, man. Let, let, let's get to the deets. It's a Maserati MC20. You know that car, you love it. It's got the same engine, the three liter twin turbo, six hundred and twenty one horsepower. This time, the roof comes off, and it's a folding. Uh, it's a retractable hard top. Goes up and down in twelve seconds. They had to redesign the back a little bit. It's got relocated um, intakes for the engine. Um, those Maserati Trident vents in the back are gone. Uh, but it's still what I think like 198 miles an hour or so top speed. Um, Maserati, when they did the MC20, uh, they designed the monocoque basically for three purposes coupe, convertible, and EV. So, I mean, each one has its own strengths and weaknesses. This car is only 143 pounds heavier while still being more rigid than the coupe. So, I mean, it feels like they did their homework on it, they still have the cool butterfly doors on it. Um, how much does it cost? You ask Maserati isn't talking about that yet. Um, but we know, we know the, uh, the coupe is what Bruce about like 220,000 to start. So, I mean, it's not, uh, is it that much? I, I'm going to look at, I, for it's, it's not an inexpensive was the number ride. in my mind, but I'm looking it up now and I'll be able to tell you, maybe it it's, is 220. Maybe I'm, it's, it's more, it. it's more than I can afford by a long shot. I'm not even putting yeah. cheese on my Whopper at this point. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, I, I ju- I mean just debuted has just as we're recording today on Wednesday. This just debuted a few hours ago, and uh, you know we can't not talk about it. It's it's going to come out with a new special edition. Uh, what's it called here in my notes? The so Prima, real quick before we do Prima that, Cherry Lawn is the base price for the coupe. Okay, okay. So you know the convertible is going to be a little bit more. So I mean, it's yes. but it's. It's such a great looking car. Um, you know, I still think the I MC20 think it's better looking than the coupe personally. Um, it's, you know, well, and the MC20 in equal, general, which right? Essentially it is. It's the, you know, the same powertrain, but to me it looks even better. Uh just, you know, purely on aesthetic opinion. And that color, um, I think that's going to be exclusive on the Prima Siri launch edition. They're only building 60. It's Aquamarina is the name of the color. So for those not uh catching us on YouTube, and you should at Motor One Podcast on YouTube, or if you're listening on Spotify or Apple or Google or any of the other podcasts, we welcome you there too. We'll always try to tell you what we're looking at here. And this is just a very pretty light blue Maserati yep. MC20. It's a and baby blue color. You could easily imagine this color on like a 55 to 57 Ford Thunderbird, and it would fit perfectly. It just, hmm. you know. It, to me, a, I've been looking at those a lot recently, to be fair. So maybe that's just you gonna buy you know, a classic Thunderbird, Bruce? No, I've just been writing about them a lot and talking to people <laughs> a lot about them a lot. But that's gotcha. you know, but it tell me I'm wrong. That color would look fantastic on a 50s Thunderbird, and it looks yeah, fantastic it, on this MC20. It it does kind of have a retro thing. And you know what? I'll also take a moment here and say um, a little salute to Maserati. They launched this at what? I think it was 2.30 p.m. Eastern time. Right. And around the same time, if you happen to follow Maserati on social media, they were on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. We were kind of, we were caught a little off guard because about 15 minutes after the, the debut, it's like, oh, Maserati's doing a, a live video. They're doing a live presentation. So we click on it. And there's just this very zen kind of peaceful music playing in the background with a close up of like the door. And in pretty much every camera angle that they put up after that, you could see some measure of sky. And we're waiting. OK, this you know presentation is about to begin. But no, it was just Maserati spending like two and a half hours with this beautiful music with just different longer than that. I thought it was with, with like just, just different hours. angles of the car. And. It's kind of a good idea. I got to I got to admit, it's kind of a good idea. If, if you go back on Maserati's social media channels, you can probably you can probably still see the video. If if you just want to relax, hey, it, it might be a good way to relax with 621 so, horsepower and no roof. Yeah. So, Matt, I understand if you can't necessarily comment because you have to remain independent on these things. But if you can, I'd welcome your opinion. <laughs> MC20 Cielo. What are your thoughts? Pretty, ugly, attractive, not so attractive? Oh, just oh no, it's it, it's it's definitely a beautiful car. I mean, the uh, you know, and what's always so wonderful about Maserati is to watch the different ways they employ the Trident. You know, mm-hmm. always. I mean, you know, from the, we obviously looking at tires. 
you see the wheels and the way they've used it in the in the wheels it's pretty amazing so mm -hmm. throughout the uh, the line but it, it is a absolutely beautiful car got me to take a look at it that's for sure uh, th that's a very that's a very astute point they do manage to work that trident in uh, in some very interesting ways and i bet if we have a chance to crawl around in that interior and maserati if you want to send me a press car i would love to do that <laughs> um and just just to see how many easter eggs are in there see how many trident easter eggs are in there i bet that'd be a, a pretty cool thing to do but yeah mc20 of course you can read all about it at motor1.com but let's let's get back to the real to the real draw of this episode um if if you're Fast forwarding, here's a reminder. We have Matt Edmonds with us from Tire Rack, Executive Vice President. Been there for just decades. <laughs> tell Jeez. me. That tell me. Old. Oh, that, no, that's that's, that's 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 a drop in the bucket. That means experience, not what, old. <laughs> you got you gotta get to the you gotta get to centuries before you start <laughs> before you start getting into the really, really old stuff. No, you've you have just some very unique experience. Um, I, I would love to talk a little bit about Tire Rack and SECA because you've Tire Rack has been involved with SECA since 1995 and has somebody that I'm not an SECA member now, but I was for a little while and I enjoy going to autocrosses. I mean, what does that mean for Tire Rack to have that relationship with SECA? Well, you know, it, it, when it all started back in 95, it was, you know, working with them in regards to the, just really to the solo national championships. And we looked at that as a way to give back to our core customer. Uh, you know, the, as we call them, the Joe pros, uh, who are the tire user out there that, uh, you know, is, is also the advocate among their circle of friends, family, and coworkers. Uh, you know, we obviously, as you can only imagine, you know, receive lots of requests for sponsorship mm -hmm. uh, from individuals. And this was our way to give back to the entire group. Uh, started with the national championships and then grew to become the entire solo program uh, throughout the year as well as Track Night America, which we we really thought is a great way to get new enthusiasts and introduce people to track driving and, and also as they've discovered all crossing. Um, and they've become great partners of ours uh, as we've gone into street survival and uh, you know, helping us provide coaches for our Tire Act teen, teen driving program, the street survival program. Very, I mean, like I said, it has a former member. I keep saying I'll get back into it. I'm out here in Rapid City, South Dakota right now, where there's actually a surprisingly robust car scene. And I kick myself every year because I'm three miles away from a really good um, autocross venue that's set up about once a month. And I keep saying I'm going to get back to it. I'm going to get back to it. I haven't done it in a little while. But I mean, I, did, I mean, listening to you talk, it, it's it's kind of inspiring <laughs> there. Um, I mean, what have been some of your personal experiences um, on on that side? I, I have you have you participated in any autocrosses? You know, I have, and and I always look back to the very first introduction I had, and, and it was down in Columbus, Indiana, uh, when Mike Jones had first started uh, Tire Rack and. And I was not even an official outlaw in the family. Uh, <laughs> we had, you know, uh, Sharon and I had gone down to visit her, visit Mike and Connie. And Mike was going out to set up an autocross course in Columbus, Indiana, which was actually Cummins Diesel's old uh, airport that they had okay. out there. Okay. And huh. um, it was literally in cornfields. And, and it was Mike had at that time a three series BMW. Um, it was, you know, nice manual transmission and I'll never forget. He says, here, go. And, and I said, well, you know, this was his baby. Ruby, I think was the one that he had at that time and, uh, went out and very first lap as I came around the corner at the very end, missed the gear, spun the car, you know, both feet in. I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, pull up, <laughs> I'll, I'll get out. 
And uh, Mike says, you weren't going fast enough. You have at it again. <laughs> nice. And so that was, that was really great. And, uh, you know, then after that, uh, we did autocrossing here. We had the South Bend region. The SCCA has a robust group here. Um, and very first time I autocrossed in a Honda CRX SI. Oh, um, oh cool. 1985. Nice. It was wonderful. Um, went out and was really just going on the, the stock tires at the time. Mike had a set of Yokohama A001Rs that he'd gotten from Yokohama. He goes, here, put these on the car and try it out. So we literally bolted them on in the paddock and, uh, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> the, Is, isn't it ridiculous? I mean, I know I'm preaching to the choir, but for the, the folks out there that, that don't really get the difference that the tires make, isn't it just a ridiculous difference? You know, how, oh. how a good set of tires will just change everything, especially back you know, then. You're, yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and, you know, that's what we're talking about, obviously, is fun and autocrossing and, and mm -hmm. having it that way. We, you know, we talk about tires are like shoes and you change them like you want to get the best out of yourself in an athletic endeavor. You wear shoes that are tuned to that endeavor, whether it's cleats, whether it's tennis shoes, whether it's running shoes whether it's boots in the wintertime, control exactly. and safety. Well, my gosh, that, all that applies to the tires as to your car. And so even if you aren't thinking about changing your tires to go out and race and get the most performance-wise out of your vehicle, you can think about changing your tires in the wintertime to get the most out of your vehicle when it comes to safety. Uh, and performance equals safety in the winter. So, um, you know, all those great things that we have in our vehicle uh, from everything from analog brakes to traction control, guess what? They're all dependent on the traction and there's only mm -hmm. four things that traction and those are the tires. So mm -hmm. you maximize your traction for the situation, uh, you'll have better control and safe, thus safety in your vehicle. Oh yeah. Um, I've said on a few occasions, I have, a 95 Mustang GT convertible that just since I work from home, it's become just the fun weekend car, but I still have a set of snow tires just in case, you know, and I put them on in winter just in case I need to go out somewhere out here in South Dakota. They don't get very aggressive with, with salt and sand. So when a storm comes through, there's, there's usually a period of about two or three hours where I can go out where it's just pure snow. And I've often, said it in a joking manner, but I'm also kind of serious by it. It's like your four wheel drive SUV has all season tires. Okay. Driving includes accelerating, stopping and turning mm -hmm. and your all wheel drive with the all seasons gives you a 33% advantage over me by going forward. I have 66% advantage by being able to stop and turn. Therefore, my Mustang is better in the snow than your SUV on all-wheel drive. And I have absolutely zero science to back that up. But I also have a car that I've driven through quite a few uh, bouts of snow and never had any issues. So, yeah, it's we're, we're big proponents on especially snow tires in winter uh, here at Rambling About Cars. Well, all-wheel drive is very confidence-inspiring, you it know, is. and it helps you. It helps you to start. It doesn't help you to stop or to turn necessarily. And, exactly. Uh, we have a Subaru out, a 2012 Subaru Outback. That's my wife's primary driver, and what I tell her whenever it gets snowy is, it's all-wheel drive, not all-wheel stop. It, it, you know, the all wheel drive, it helps you just find setting off. It does absolutely nothing when it comes time to slow down. Like it doesn't matter. So you got to be careful out there. My first all wheel drive vehicle was a 1990 Subaru legacy station wagon that I bought just as a cheap winter car. And yeah, I've, I've, I said it back then. I said, once you get an all wheel drive vehicle, you become a slave to it because it's just so much better at everything, but that was before I really understood the difference of tires. Um, <laughs> now it's like, well, give me that, give me that Subi with a good set of snow tires in the winter. And yeah, you know, we'll go for it. But well, when I, when I had that CRX SI, you know, it, as much as it was fun to put autocross tires on it, that little four wheel drive car with 
with winter tires on it, dedicated winter tires was great. You know, the handbrake and you could just go around corners and, and it, it was crazy how much oversteer you could have in a front wheel drive car. Mm -hmm. Well, before I, before I had my tire education, um, I had a, it was just a regular Ford Taurus. It was before I got into the Taurus shows and it was like, well, the front wheels drive the car. I'll just put snow tires on the front too. <laughs> yeah. yeah Matt, Matt's already laughing. I experienced the most horrendous oversteer in all conditions I've ever experienced in my entire life. I couldn't go 15 miles an hour around a cloverleaf entrance ramp on a highway <laughs> without, without opposite lock because the front was just there, but just a little bit of extra speed and, and it was just gone. It was, it was, yeah. it was fun until it was scary. I'll be honest. <laughs> No good, man. You can't do things that way. So, uh, Matt, I I have a question for you, and this is something we uh, prepared a little bit beforehand. But um, so at Motor One, we write, uh, you know, we write uh, several stories a week about motorhomes. And these days, when we talk about motorhomes, the folks that are overlanding is kind of the big trend. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. for anyone who's listening who doesn't know what that is, these are the folks that they'll take a Forerunner, a Jeep Wrangler a modern Bronco, some, it, you know, some sort of four wheel drive vehicle and they'll outfit it, not just for rock crawling for an afternoon or something like that. They'll take it and they'll outfit it to, you know, go out into the wilderness. They'll camp for a weekend, let's say or overnight, something like that. And then they'll come back. Mm -hmm. And the thing is with those vehicles. So you need something that you can you know, drive to wherever you're off-roading. So you can't have a tire that's just totally off-road oriented, but then that could also kind of go off-road and, you know, take you there and then bring you back and drive you home. And so I was kind of curious and I, you know, I sent this question in beforehand for those types of people. And since this is kind of a growing trend, what do you have a tire or a type of tires or something like that, that you would recommend to someone who's building up their, like I said, their Cherokee, their forerunner, their Wrangler, their Bronco. Oh, I, I did a story on a guy with a Porsche Cayenne and it was actually a really yeah, no. sick. It was a really so, sick Cayenne. Those are becoming got... very popular that the prices yeah. are coming down, that the early Cayennes people are doing that. Like, you know, you buy yeah. a cheap Cayenne that's, you know, a first generation model you lift the suspension, you put some off-road tires on it, you take it out into the wilderness, camp overnight, and you come back. Like that that's totally viable. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um so Matt, yeah, um what would you suggest to people? What what would your advice be? Well, you know, just as we talk about the vehicle type, you know, Subarus have also become very popular simply because they're also totally. they're a lot more fuel efficient right now too. So yep. mm -hmm. um but but doing the same kind of thing with those vehicles um you know it, it is crazy because overlanding's brought people back off-road shall we say whereas you know before when people owned jeeps and trucks and suvs and they went off-roading you know off-roading was a gravel road um, <laughs> they, weren't taking them, they weren't taking them into the outback like they do now right um, mm -hmm. and uh you know so a on off-road all-terrain tire uh, you know, depending on which way you want to skew that tire, uh, you know, if we push it a little more towards the off-road side where you're going to take it off and, and, you know, give that tire some mild abuse, you know, you can't go wrong with it. it and people in, in the industry, everyone knows the good old BF Goodrich altering KO2 is just, it's, it's the standard. Uh, and it's a name it, that's been it around is, for a while. Yeah. It has, and it's got relatively mild uh, uh, service as far as it goes when you're on the highway. It's it's not too noisy, um, mm -hmm. but it really holds up and performs very well off road. Um, you know, if you want something that is, you know, skews the other direction, is even milder on the highway and and not as good on off road. Um, it's capable, but it's it's not something you really want to go way off into the woods with, um, you know, Continental has their terrain contact AT, which, uh, you know, is their version of, of an all-terrain tire, but it's been tuned towards a little more 
skewed, should we say, a little more towards road performance than off-road performance. Okay. Is so that... it's, there's a lot of, you know, there, there are a lot of options and a lot of things in between, you know, that you can discover as well. Mm -hmm. I, I guess I'm just curious from a business perspective, is that kind of a trend that you're seeing the towards the the enthusiasts who are going more towards the off-roader or I'm sorry, not off-roader towards the overlander route. Like, cause as a news writer and as someone who is writing about it all the time, we see that a lot, but I'm curious, is it a trend because it's something that people are just clicking on and they're interested in, or is it a trend because it's something that people are actually going out and doing and they're seeing these stories and they're saying, Oh yeah, that looks like fun. I want to do that too. Um, like, like Jimmy. I'm gonna buy a set of wheels and tires, and you know, some B of Goodrich all terrains. Or to, uh, I'm gonna take my to, Subaru out back, to put on my Mustang, for for example. <laughs> <laughs> like I've talked about a few times. But well, a lot of people will be at that. But you know, you like, oh hey, I could buy it. You know, a used Cherokee for less than ten thousand dollars or something like that. And I, oh. you know. Or yeah, not sure. much money. I can lift it and take it. Like, is that something you guys are seeing, or is that just something we're covering and it's not a real trend? I guess. Well, you know, we look back and and I hate to even bring this into the conversation, this word, but when COVID um, first hit, mm -hmm. overlanding had really kind of just started. You know, yeah, say a year before that, when two we started seeing it, and. All of a sudden, now you started to, and, and we saw a crazy influx. You know, when COVID wow. hit, and March 11th, you know, the date hit when when all of a sudden COVID became a real thing. Um, you know, everybody in the industry was really concerned. Well, then the stimulus checks came out, and it was as if everybody had their shopping carts full and were getting ready to hit the buy button. Because all of a sudden they had the stimulus money, which I'm sure was given to them so they could buy tires and wheels and lift kits for their trucks. I um, bought a watch, but yeah. <laughs> you bought a watch. I, I, yeah, I put the, keys on my Whopper that time, that day. Yeah, sure, it sure seemed like that was the reason behind it because we saw an influx. But I, I think the, part of what started to happen too was you saw people realize, well, now I don't have to stay home and work anymore. Maybe home becomes my overlander. Uh, people were traveling the country. Um, and, you know, maybe they weren't going off and living off the country. There are a few people that are doing that, living out in the wilderness. But there were more people that were just on the road. And, um, you know, so I think it was kind of a convergence of things at the same time. But, uh, mm -hmm. but we really, we saw a great increase in our business in off-road you know, light truck, SUV, tires, wheels, um, and suspension kits. That is super interesting. I, I Just, figured, th I figured there'd be uh, a little bump, but, uh, I mean, just to see it significantly, that is was, super interesting. Wow. It was crazy. I mean, uh, so yeah, we, we like the stimulus checks. <laughs> so, so, just so do we. Real quick to add on that, to, just to build on that. I think, and again, this is just my opinion, but if you remember that movie Nomadland came out uh, with Frances McDormand that ended up winning Best Picture where she's in, and this was more the van life thing than the uh, overlanding thing, but it was about a woman who, you know, spent time living in a van and, you know, again, I, I never did it, so I can't say that it actually happened, but from the stories we wrote, it certainly seemed that way, but it seemed like that movie inspired a lot of people to at least consider that way of life and that, you know, the RVs and the motorhomes and the overlanding thing kind of just kind of built popularity, like you were saying, from 2020 and 2021. So, yeah. The crazy thing is a neighbor of ours who was a professor at the university you know, when he could go and didn't have to be in the classroom and was doing everything via video, um, he bought a Sprinter and turned it into an Overlander. And they were going to a lot, him and his wife to a lot and stuff. And they literally just sold their house in the last couple of weeks. Wow. <laughs> they're going to live that life. He's retiring and they're living that life going forward. So there are a lot of people doing that. And I'll be honest. It looks great. It it's always been it tempting to me. me. But first of all, I, 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 mean, I, I mean, okay, I'm a bit older than Bruce. I I you was are. born in I was born in the 70s, and I remember 
the conversion van craze of the Mm -hmm. 80s and i always late 70s 80s yeah late 70s 80s and i always love those vans so it's always been something that's been at least a little appealing to me and has the resurgence here has happened in the last few years i keep seeing these projects and it's like i mean i don't know how many like schoolies that i've seen where somebody takes an old school bus that they bought for like a song, like 1500 bucks or something. And it's converted into this just cool RV inside. Um, I mean, it, it's really appealing, but then I think of all the stuff I have and all the stuff that I like <laughs> the models that surround behind the, you, the models that are behind me, the models that you can't see in front of me, the models that you can't see in the closets um the third car that i just bought in michigan that i'm gonna pick up in a few weeks yeah um so it's it, it would be fun for a little while but i yeah. I, I i still need a, a base of operations but I, I mean our former boss john neff yep. um editor-in-chief he's now editor-in-large i think he's the only guy in the country that traded uh, uh, traded a tesla Tesla Model F- 3 and a Spark EV. He traded and, and, two electric vehicles. For an F-150. Because he's he hybrid. bought a Let's, all, he, hybrid. Hybrid. Oh. Rec- record high fuel prices. He's the only guy that traded a Tesla for an F-150. But I mean, they're they're going on the road. They're gonna do yeah. like this this awesome several month adventure. They've got a camper trailer that they're pulling. So I mean he he's he's going for it. We're really excited hey, to, to hear what he's going to do. Former guest Kyle Connor. I just learned this this week. He's been oh, on the show yeah. before, folks. He's going to Alaska. He's got a Winnebago. I think he's got a Winnebago Echo. He's got a Winnebago something. I, I'm going to have They're words with that Alaska. guy because he took he he's he's in Colorado, and he took a picture next to a Montana sign. Hey, welcome to Montana. I recognize the sign because I've stopped there and took pictures. <laughs> of my Mustang at the same sign that guy went through rapid city and he didn't even let me know. Okay, Kyle. <laughs> but yeah, it's just fat. It, it's just become this we're, we're, trend in the past two, three years that that, oh, what they're called overlanding van life RV. That's just, it. it's popped. Like you can't fight it. Like it's just the case that things are. And I love that you saw that directly on the, on the wheel and tire side. That that's, that's very yeah. telling. Totally. Or, or it's people like me that are just fed up at home and I want to go off road with my Mustang. That's yeah. That's, I'll just, I'll just buy another one for that. Uh, but, but speaking of, speaking of cars um, and, and tires here, we also were, we also sent over just some info on, on our cars. Um, and I guess, I guess Bruce, do you mind if, if I start here? Um, no, of course not. I'm going to pull this up. So I, let me interject real quick. Yes. Um, so, uh, Tire Rack has, uh, uh, I, I'm not blowing smoke here. Tire Rack has fantastic customer service. Yes. They do have a live chat function and a, I believe, at least last time I did it, a call in function because when I got tires for my wife's car, I talked to you guys. And so they have things that will help you find tires for your car. And those folks are very um, knowledgeable and very helpful. And they do have a tire decision guide, which is what I popped up here. But Smith and I, we which is which our... is pretty cool. Yep, and, and uh, it's very easy to use at TireRack.com. It is. Um, and, but Smith and I, we sent kind of some info about our own cars in beforehand, and to 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 help Matt kind of help us buy tires, kind of quote unquote. So, yeah. <laughs> Smith, go from there. So so. I mean, I'll, I'll mention the Mustang here at first. Um, 95 Mustang GT convertible, lightly modified. I'm not going crazy. It, it dynos 250 horsepower. Um, but I do have it strengthened up underneath, so it's not all wobbly gobbly like the you know, like the Mustangs usually are. And it's just a fun car, it's a pleasure car. I'll take it out on the weekends. I bet I've driven it maybe a thousand miles this year in total. That's actually going to change in a couple of weeks, though, because I'm driving it from here to Michigan. That's going to be, oh, God, this is just now hitting me, Bruce. I'm going to spend 2,500 miles in that car with that loud exhaust. Anyways, OK, I'm, I'm talking <laughs> myself. I'm talking myself out of that trip. But, you know, tire, tire, ferry. that'll be nice. T- tire wise, um, you know, a, a fun car 
that might see some occasional autocross, but I don't necessarily want a, a separate set of, of autocross wheels and tires uh, because I might only do it once or twice a year, but something that's still going to be relatively comfortable for, for just cruises around town. Um, it doesn't have to be any measure of all season, because if I want to go out in winter, I've got a set of snow tires that, that I'll mount up. Um, the stock size on that, that, that was the GT with the 17 inch wheels. So it's 245. Yep. 245 45 yeah yeah 245 45 17, I, I i know that the, the default answer always is always like michigan michelin pilot sport four right it's <laughs> that's i mean that's like that that's like the answer for everything um but I, I mean something i mean and any ideas any any thoughts on what might be good for a vehicle like that well you know putting the the combination of of an autocross or you know a drag strip, you know, you want something stout, uh, something a, you know, definitely a, a summer type tire. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you're, you're absolutely right. I mean, that is a 27 year old car. <laughs> um, you know, the oh, I'm tire, taking tools when I go across country, I, there's going to be a tool bag in the trunk. Tire technology has changed a tremendous amount, obviously since that vehicle came out. Um, but you're, you know, you're spot on. The Michelin Pilot Sport 4S is the, is the answer, you know, I think, as we said, money, no option. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you wanted to do something at a lower price point, um, Yokohama has an ad pan, uh Apex V601, I believe it is, okay. um, which is a really uh, tire that's going to hold up to some of the abuse you may give it. Uh, and sometimes it takes abuse to have fun, shall we say, with that car. Um, oh, it, definitely in that car. As far as drag racing or autocrossing. But uh, but no, it's uh, th those would be two really good choices at, let's say, opposite ends of the price spectrum. So, Okay. No, no, very good. Very good. Bruce? So, Matt, I'm just going to give you one of mine because I kind of want to keep this bit short because I have a bunch of other questions for you. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to ask you about my wife's car. And actually, this is the car that Tire Rack helped me pick out the tires. So if you disagree with them, I'm going to know. <laughs> um, so she no has pressure. A, Come on. Exactly. Man. No pressure here. Well, well wait, they're <laughs> two-ish years old. So maybe there's something new out there. Um, so we have a 2012 Subaru Outback. She drives it. Um, she is a uh, librarian at the local university. It's like five miles a day. It's literally like two and a half miles each way. But it's our prayer, our primary road trip car. So we have family that's about two hour, two and a half hours away in Columbus, about two and a half hours away in uh, Akron. So it is our road trip car. We ended up with uh, Goodyear Assurance tires. And the reason mm -hmm. we ended up with that is that I told the representative who I spoke with from Tire Rack that this is a vehicle that essentially is never going to be off-road. If this car's off-road, something bad has happened. We are... <laughs> You we missed the apex. That's what exactly. happened. Exactly. We are not off-road people. This is, and that was the thing, is that a lot of the tires that, and again, this was about two years ago, the suggested tires, a lot of them were like semi, like all-terrain or like, you know, they were like very light sure. all-terrain tires versus I don't need that at all. I just need like very good highway manners, very good on-road manners. And that's, you know, I talked to your guy or, you know, I researched it on Tire Rack. I talked to um, whoever the representative was at the time. Sure. And they said, yeah, the Goodyear Assurance, that's kind of the better bet if you're never going to go off road. So sure. was your guy right? <laughs> well, and and that, that is one of the, the great things that we have going for us. You know, as you said, you talk to somebody. I mean, we totally. have over yeah. we have over a hundred people that are on the phone. Our our sales team. Um, oh, wow. and I will put head to head with anybody in the industry when it comes to tire knowledge because they learn from the best. Uh, Professor John Rassetter, as we call him. Um, but uh, no, the uh, the assurance is a great tire uh, right now. Uh, as we look at what's available out there. 
Um, like I said, this was out two years ago. We got these in either 2019 or 2020. So there may be there's something better now, but that was what we were doing at the time. There are, I mean, based on, uh, you know, the information you'd sent us, we, we looked and we would now, based on what we have in stock, and it may, totally. <laughs> it would suggest a, uh, which is not the way we like it. Our inventory is down so low, obviously because of supply chain issues, et cetera. Um, but um, no, the uh, Veretta Stein uh, makes a quad oh. track pro. Um, okay. That actually is very much focused and very refined uh, for road use. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like you said, a tire that not that is not uh, not be or not recommended based on any off road performance. Mm -hmm. um, it is. It is a tire that has the Three Peak Mountain Snowflake branding on it, so it's mm -hmm. very good for light snow traction. Um, you know, the uh, really the the top choice we probably would would make now, and this is a tire that was not available uh, when when you were taking a look, is the Michelin uh, Cross Climber Two. Um, oh, I haven't even heard of that. Okay. Unfortunately, it's we won't have any in stock until in late in August. So. <laughs> okay, so so it's uh, you know not if you went through the recommendation, it's something that wouldn't come up right now because it's not available. But uh, but there's I, fortunately lots of choices. Sure. No, and I guess just as a as a follow up to that, I assume my situation has to come up a lot that people with. Toyota RAV4s, Honda CRVs, Kia Sorentos, vehicles of that nature that are crossovers, you know, that, you know, they have all wheel drive, they could go off road, but the owner never takes them off road, that the owner bought the vehicle, maybe they live in a snowy area like I do, maybe, you know, for whatever reason, but it's never going to go off road. So, it, you know, they you kind of want to tailor the tire towards that, that there's no, um, I'm trying to think of the best way to say it, that, that there's no reason to offer an, you know, a tire that can take, uh, you know, more than the kind of light gravel path. Um, I, I assume I can't be alone there or, or am I? Uh, yeah. Tell me I'm wrong. No. Well, and it, again, it goes back to the conversation we had a little earlier where we talked about tires being like shoes, you know, and, and that's what's wonderful about tires no matter what the vehicle you have, you know, the vehicle comes with an original equipment tire that has been designed to satisfy specifications of that manufacturer. And there's a lot of things driving that relationship between the tire and the vehicle. And so many of them are fuel economy issues, et cetera. But when you get your vehicle, you can tune your vehicle to your own personal need you know, by selecting a different type of tire or doing, you know, tires. And you'll have that choice. If you keep the vehicle long enough, you'll have that opportunity, you know, several times in the life of the vehicle. So. Very nice. So I, I was curious, I have a, a, a personal question for you, I guess. Uh, what is your daily driver? I, I was curious to find out for the person that, you know, you specialize in tires you have for decades. What do you drive every day? What do you take to the office? I really want to hear it's an 85 CRX SI. Me <laughs> too. I, I wish it was because that car was fun every single time you got into it or put it on, as I said. Um, and and uh, yeah, that was a great car. Unfortunately, no, I don't have that car anymore. Um, my personal driver is a Audi. So it definitely all wheel drive, but an RS7 performance. So nice. Ooh, very and, nice. And it is a fun, fun vehicle. Uh, I I've bet it is. Almost 70,000 miles on it and uh, I'm getting ready to flip it. I'm not sure exactly for what. So, okay. You know, now's the time. The market, you know. Yeah. Um, but I uh, can't say I'm, I'm ready to make that jump yet. I just can't. I mean, the, the RS7 just has such a beautiful note to it. And uh, especially if you put it in dynamic mode <laughs> and uh, it's, it's a fun car. I, I really enjoy it. And, and of course with winter tires, it's a snowmobile. So. Sure. It, well, it, it's a beautiful, great sounding snowmobile. That's <laughs> yeah. inside as, as somebody that 
snowmobiled a lot. I haven't done it recently. Um, yeah. What what a vehicle. Well done. Oh, that, that, yeah, I can't fight you there. On, you, on a it, similar note, on a similar note, let me ask. I, I mean, you've done autocrossing. What's what's the coolest thing that you've driven, either you know, autocross or on, on like a road course? Um, hmm. Wait, let's change it. Not the coolest. What's the most fun you've had in autocross most, or on a road course? Most fun, cool. Same Those are thing. different, though. It, it's like. It, it, yeah, it's okay, tough. I, I guess that. I would have to say between a uh, Gen 3 Mazda RX-7 uh, was actually a real hoot because... I love that uh, answer. You, that car was a blast. Um, the other one, though, that was like trying to handle a caged animal uh, out on, on an autocross course, I had a Viper GTS. Oh, uh, oh, I can't imagine roughly what year GTS. can you say? It was a uh, it was a ninety five GTS. Okay, yeah, that would so be it a was handful. Stripes. It was it was it was a fun car. And, I can't uh, imagine that on a small autocross course. Oh, it was it was a blast. I mean, it was uh, it just had obviously incredible acceleration. Uh, of course. Going to hear in another week, going to be autocrossing my son's Model 3 with them, uh, which will be interesting to see uh, the Tesla Model 3, how that does out on the track with just incredible instantaneous acceleration. So um, looking forward to that. But uh, uh, you know what? That is the perfect answer to a question I was about to ask you, because obviously EVs, it, it's hard to fight the answer that EVs are the future. Like the industry, the automotive industry in general is going EV. How does that change tires? How does that change the way you sell tires? Because obviously a lot of EVs, the way they come stock have, you know, low rolling resistance tires in order to maximize their range. So how, how does that affect you as a business? Like, are you seeing more of that? Are you seeing people swapping out those tires for something that's stickier, but obviously affects the range? Like, well, people are perfect segue. Sure. Sure. No, people are definitely, it, it's what it's doing to, for us. And, and uh, we are in the process of trying to develop a method that we can really measure the range, uh, the impact that the tire has as part of our testing. Um, you know, short of sending tires in to Smithers or somebody to have, you know, measured testing done. But uh, doing it within our tests, you know, the way we do testing, uh, being able to really um, understand the impact on range, uh, because that is the question that, that a lot of people have. Um, you know, people with EVs see it right away when they go to winter tires, because winter tires typically are much higher rolling resistance than, you know, a standard all season or a uh, summer tire uh, can be. So, uh, no, it's, and, and of course we have to love it. Um, you know, EV tire, EVs tend to use tires up a lot quicker than other cars since it's, you know, all on or all off. So. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. And, oh. and there's a little bit of a weight issue. I mean, not that, not that SUVs aren't a, uh, uh, you know, not that SUVs are featherweights, but um, I mean, when you have something like a Model S, that's what five thousand some, yep. or the GMC Hummer SUV, oh. which we were talking about last week, or was it last week or two weeks ago with Seth, where his Miata that he was was driving that week weighed less than the battery pack in the Hummer. So, you know, the weight well, is definitely you know, a concern. Yeah, you have to. I mean, and that's. One of the things that we try to do, uh, as you mentioned, us having a tire decision guide, I mean, you know, so much of that talks about how you drive, et cetera. But mm -hmm. we start the whole process by asking for the make, model, and year of vehicle, because that way we go through, we make sure that technically the tire works for the vehicle. You know, it's the right size, the right, uh, you know, the right wheel diameter, et cetera. Uh, but then it really even gets into the important part of load capacity now. 
um, you know, the ability because, you know, that's what's really important is how that tire is going to work as far as load capacity goes. Makes sense. On, on a similar note there, um, what's a common mistake that people that you see all the time that people make when it comes to buying tires, whether it's something that they should be paying attention to that they don't. I mean, what's, what are some of the big mistakes that people make? Well, I mean, making sure you get the right size tire is very important and, and don't assume it's particularly if you purchase a used car, don't assume that the size, the tire size that's on that vehicle is the correct size. Uh, because, you know, unfortunately, people get in positions where, oh, I need a set of four tires. I need them right now. Um, you know, all of a sudden, if you need a two, you know, a 205 65 16, and all of a sudden you've got a 205 60 16 on your vehicle because that's what they had in, you know, in stock and it was close. That, that's going to work. I mean, that's the sort of thing you need to really make sure that. You work with a reputable tire dealer and, you know, make sure you get the right size for your vehicle, um, right speed rating, right load bearing capacity, um, and then, you know, a tire that's going to fulfill your needs. Um, all the other things we've talked about with traction, et cetera. So. I know I've heard, I've heard different sources say uh, when it comes to air, um, oh, you just, you know, go buy what's recommended on the tire no, go by what's recommended on the car. What should what should people follow on that? You should be looking at the placard on your vehicle. So on the door jam, the driver's side door jam, or mm -hmm. uh, some older vehicles inside the fuel filler cap area, uh, always you can find it in the in the owner's manual. But that's where you should go to get your tire pressure. The pressure that's on the tire is the maximum that that tire can sustain, maximum air pressure. And you know a lot of times. You think about it i think back gosh when my dad had a camper on a truck or when he would tow a boat you know he put extra air into the tires because he mm -hmm. increased the load capacity you never go over what was stamped on the tire but you would increase it to increase your load capacity because it's really not the tire that's carrying the load it's the air in the tire that mm -hmm. really carries the load so that's why you want to make sure you have the right air pressure and and uh good point smith i mean you know don't just look at the tire. That's uh, that's maximum air pressure for a tire. And so, and on that too, let, let me let me get one last one in, Bruce. I know you. Oh man, I've got a weird with. question. So go for it. Oh, oh, I know your weird questions. We're in trouble. Um, <laughs> tire tire myths. I I knew a guy that's um, the first time. Uh, what is back in two thousand eight, two thousand nine, when fuel prices were going way up. He inflated his tire. I can't remember what he was driving a Ford something, but he, he's like, dude, inflate your tires to like 65, 70 PSI. Oh, that sounds bad. Be be That's because, because they're going to roll down the road easier. You're going to like double your fuel mileage. It's, it's like, what kind of crazy myths do people <laughs> just like need to forget about? Obviously that's one of them. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's one of them. Uh, you know, because you tend to wear your tires out faster uh, and your tires don't perform as well. I mean, all of a sudden, instead of, you know, the tire has a profile, a tread profile that works with the road and that footprint's pretty small. Well, you inflate a tire, that footprint gets even smaller. So yep. all of a sudden you don't stop as fast either. And, you know, if it's raining, you it's easier to hydroplane, et cetera. So, um, yeah, traditionally they say what the, the the piece of the tire that's touching the road is about the size of your fist on a traditional car. Is that right? Something yeah. Or to, kind of to, about you know, there. an eight and a half, 11, eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. And I mean, that's sure. the equivalent of all four tires, the footprint, if you, you know, fold mm -hmm. it into fours and, and uh, that's, that's each tire is about a fourth of that sheet of paper. So, so yeah, it's not much. It's for sure. Um, you know, other ones you get into, uh, UTQG rating. You know, some people pay attention to that. That's the uniform tire grading uh, rating, and it uh, uniform quality tire grading. Uh, it is not. It's something that when it was conceived by the Department of Transportation many many years ago, it made sense. Makes no sense anymore. It's uh, you know self-paced and and 
the manufacturers measure against their own baseline tire. And, you know, there's a relativity to it, but, uh, you know, some people go by that and compare tires by that. You won't even hear our sales team ever talk about that or utilize that as a way to compare tires. So, okay. So, Matt, I, this is perhaps the dumbest question I've ever asked someone. <laughs> um, sure. And I don't know why it jumped into my head. But as we were talking about various tire pressures and things like that, that's what prompted it. And so if you want to call me an idiot, I fully respect that. But for whatever reason, when talking about tire pressures and things, um, the when the Nissan GTR came out, they always talked about how they filled the tires with nitrogen because nitrogen was lighter than oxygen and that would help the rolling resistance of the tire. And again, I'm sorry. I don't know where this question is coming from. And if you don't have an answer, I totally respect that. But just respond to that, I guess. Should you fill your tires with pure nitrogen rather than the air that comes out of the pump? And I, I as I ask this question, I'm slightly embarrassed of myself for asking this question. So please. You shouldn't be. It's, it's, uh, it's something that... Uh is a question that gets asked all the time. Uh, I we hope don't... not, because the last time I remember hearing any question was the Nissan GTR, because I remember yeah. all the PR surrounding that car. Oh, they filled the tires with nitrogen. It's lighter than oxygen. It spins so much. But like, yeah. Bruce, so, let me make you feel a little bit better. There's a yeah, dealership here in town that makes a big deal. They advertise, oh, we put nitrogen in our used no cars way. tires. Okay. I guess I feel a little oh, mad. Let us have it. Matt, please tell me if I'm a moron. It's acceptable. No, no, no. Everybody, it, it's something that gets sold uh, to a lot of people. And you can always tell by the green caps that are on the valve stems that if it has nitrogen or not. But, I mean, if you think about it, the air we breathe is mostly nitrogen. There's very little sure. oxygen in it. Um, totally. The, the nitrogen is used in racing uh, for because it stays stable under temperature, uh, you know, it, which is critical to keep air pressure within a pound or two. Um, it, nitrogen is, is very good if you have a vintage car, something to keep tires on because you have to worry, you know, air, air leaks out of the tire over totally. time, yeah. you know, tires like a balloon, and, and that's why you want to check your air pressure, you know, once a month, uh, because it changes by temperature, but also just because it will seep out of the tire. It's not a perfect balloon. Well, oxygen carries moisture with it when it does that. So if you have a vintage car, it helps keep tires from getting dry rot, et cetera, over time. Um, but, uh, you know, the, the myth of nitrogen, you're better off making sure you check your air pressure once a month and adjust it. Uh, that'll get you further when it comes to getting the best performance out of your tire, getting the best life out of your tire, more so than nitrogen. Uh, because if you think about it, if, if I were to say to you right now, well, your car has nitrogen in the tires and you need to check your air pressure, though, where are you going to go put nitrogen in your car, in your oh. tires? You're gonna you're gonna dilute it by putting, you know, air in, and you're really not diluting it that much. But uh, Matt, but you yeah. gave that question a far more serious and <laughs> intelligent answer than it ever deserved. So thank you for that. No, I I actually I never considered the uh, the vintage car aspect. Um, that, I, that's I mean, true. especially that's if true. I mean if if you're if you have an older car. Well, I mean, but I think it, it's super older. I think it's like when you have a tube in the tire, like older car, right? No, like, not necessarily. I mean, oh, okay. um, you know, people, if you don't, um, you know, if you aren't using your tire and building up temperature cycles, heat cycles in it, you know, you'll get moisture, you get condensation in it. And um, that's why you want to do yeah. that. Yeah. I mean, say okay. you, I mean, well, thank you. You bought one of those 87 Buick Grand Nationals uh, with 240 miles on it. It's, it's still sitting on the original tires. Yeah. You're not going to replace those original tires. 
I guess well, I'm putting you will, you, know, you will if you want to go drive the car safely. Right, but if if you're just keeping it in your collection, I guess nitrogen, you know, help them help them with the dry. No, that's that that was actually very informative. I still am not going to go to that dealership that's that's got the the wavy the wavy tube man out front. You know, we have nitrogen in all of our tires. I, I, <laughs> yeah, Matt, what um, what's been your best experience in in your years dealing with tires? Hmm. I was just thinking of that. What's been your best experience working at Tire Rack over these, like we said, Tire Rack experience years. with tires? Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll tell you, it, it's, um, this sounds kind of goofy, but um, it, it truly is when, when you get people to understand that the importance that the tires have and, that, and really what a, the impact a tire has. And I have to say some of our biggest oh my gosh, moments have come at uh, winter tire introductions. And we do programs where we bring media in and we go, we use the hockey rink over at Notre Dame. And just on that hockey rink, you show them the difference between a summer tire, an all season tire and a winter tire, you know, at 10 miles an hour. And it's like, oh my gosh, this really does make a difference. And uh, the light bulb goes on and, um, you know, in a one-on-one -on -one situation, you know, gosh, friends, neighbors that, that mm -hmm. you know, come to you say, you really need winter tires. And they're like, oh, no, I don't need winter tires. And it's like, here, take my car, go drive <laughs> it out. And they come back and they put them on and, they, you know, they'll never be without them again. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, that sort of stuff is, is some really pretty cool stuff. And uh, not to mention all the tire introductions over the years that we've gotten to go to with the manufacturers. And I've had the great honor of, uh, of going a lot of times with the media flights. So it's always kind of fun to be there with the media and, and uh, they always look at us and go, what do you guys think of these tires? <laughs> and and our, <laughs> always, this is it's a brand new tire. Uh, our response to is once we get it back on our test track and we drive on it, we'll let you know. Nice. And, you know, there's absolutely nothing wrong at all with what you said, because I try to preach. I'm, I'm a big proponent of winter tires. It's not just about control. I mean, you could save somebody's life with this advice. This is a legit life saving advice. If you are able to stop 10 feet quicker, the one time in your life you're going to need it, it could save your life. And that, well, that, can, that can be overstated, right? And, and, and I will go one step further, um, you know, and, and this is something that's actually very near and dear to our hearts because we've been involved with the program since the very beginning. And you talk about something that has an impact on everyone that drives, and that's our Tire Act Street Survival Program uh, that BMW Car Club Foundation founded and started. Uh, we worked with them, supported them, helping to grow the program by getting SCCA involved, Porsche Club involved, uh, but a program to give teen drivers really life-saving experience behind the wheel. Um, and, uh, you know, that program, which has been ongoing now for, oh gosh, well over 15 years, um, you know, can never can never get enough young drivers behind the wheel, but well, I'll tell you the stories you hear from them about experiencing something days or months after they've uh, taken the program and what they learned in that program saved their life and the life of their passengers or others. And um, you know, the story I always tell that that uh, has an amazing impact was when. We had a phone call from a parent who put their son through the program, and uh, and he had avoided an accident with his sister in the passenger side of the seat of the car, and uh, the accident probably would have killed both of them. And he called to thank us for saving his child's life. And we got done speaking, and I said, "Well, you you, you sound awfully familiar," and it was Scott Goodyear. The Indy oh, car wow. driver, who huh. you would think wow. he taught his kids how to drive, and and he said, "I thought I did a great job, but my, my son came back. My daughter came back with my son, and my daughter said, 
dad, he said he learned how to drive like that at Street Survival. And um, yes. he knew what to do. And, and uh, Scott has been a, a uh, real proponent of the program ever since then. Uh, and, uh, you know, my gosh, if, if we had impact on Scott Goodyear's kids, think of what we, all the other young people we've taught and we continue to teach. That's a wonderful yeah. story. Thanks for sharing that story. And we have the website here, correct? If you're not watching on YouTube, you want to go to streetsurvival.org to, to learn about the program? Correct. And it happens across the country. Uh, we unfortunately had to slow down quite a bit during uh, the COVID uh, quarantine, but we are trying to ramp back up to get to well over 100 schools across the country. And the beauty of this program is these young people are driving the car that they drive the most, their own car. It's either their car or their parents' car that they drive the most so that when they leave the program, they don't have to translate anything of, mm -hmm. oh, wow, this was this really cool car that I got to drive and what did I learn? Right. No, this is my car and this is what I learned and I know exactly how it feels. And I never learned as much about not only my abilities, but just the responses of a vehicle as I did when I did a first, uh, just an open track session. It was actually up at Gingerman Raceway. Um, <laughs> Uh, that, that I'm sure you're familiar with. Um, and I've, I've done just a couple like smaller performance driving schools and each time I've learned something and an event like this, it can't be overstated. I don't care who your instructor is attending schools like this street survival.org. I mean, it, it can, it can be, it, it can be a lifesaver. Um, and, and it, it, it's, it's always fun to just go out and really experience a car in a safe, controlled environment. Um, such a great story, Matt. Thank you so much for sharing that. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's a great program and, uh, you know, we hope to save many more lives with it going forward. And, and, you know, it's not just the teens it's, you know, all you have to do is, is you're driving down the road, look around and the car either on either side of you or in front of you or behind you, most likely as a teen driving it. So it's for everybody's safety. Oh yeah. And I mean, okay. I just turned 47. Yeah. I'm getting, I'm getting along there. I did an autocross school just a couple years ago and still, uh, still was learning things. It, it, it's a process that never stops. Um, and I encourage everybody to try to get involved with that. Bruce, uh, what else? I, actually, Matt, let, let me let me just kind of give you an open mic here, because um, we're getting here towards the end. We really appreciate having you on here. Anything that you want to that you want to promote, talk about, let people know about. Uh, I, I mean, let our let our listeners know. I'll tell you, I couple of things, and and it has to do with the probably the most important part of your purchase. You know. Everybody says, well, gosh, I'm buying tires from the tire rack and they're getting shipped to me. How do I get them put on? Um, mm. We've started a mobile installation service. Uh, oh, started okay. out as being called ASAP Tires, but now it's Tire Rack Mobile Install uh, in major markets around the country. It's uh, not everywhere yet, but uh, we have quite a few bands out there um, that you make your purchase and they'll actually come with your tires and install them at your home business, wherever is convenient for you. Um, and, you know, that is in addition to our, you know, well over uh, 8,000 recommended installers around the country mm -hmm. of which we bolstered that by a thousand since the first of the year um, wow. with the addition of discount tire stores. So, yes. Uh, so that's actually what I was going to ask you about, because I've never used the on location installer, but I've always used your recommended installer and you just go to them and you say, I have tires from tire rack and they throw them on. So, but yeah, I didn't know you guys were doing things literally in parking lots or driveways or whatever. So that's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Too. Yeah. That's, and in, you know, in addition to our vans or there are a lot of other, uh, actually mobile installers that are listed as, as our, you know, recommended installers as well. Um, cool. there you go. And, uh, yeah, the, um, but also our, uh, 
acquisition by Discount Tire has allowed us to expand, and we now have brick and mortar presence, you know, in the form of installation centers uh, at all of their stores. They they will uh, install your tires as well. But you're still, I mean, you're still the tire rack that everybody knows and loves, and you don't just have tires. I mean, you tire rack sells all kinds of other components for vehicles. Yes. Yes, we do wheels, do suspension, uh, brakes, a lot of stuff, you know, really grew out of the enthusiast, serving the enthusiast needs. Uh, but then, uh, as you wipers? Mentioned, I know I've got some of those. Windshield <laughs> 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 you it. Thank you. Windshield wipers. Uh, right. You know, and uh, yeah, so. Well, gosh, thank you so yeah. much for your time, for being here. I think we're we're getting pretty close to the end folks. Um, I know we didn't get to any comments this week. Obviously we had something special going on, but we're going to get to more comments next week. And uh, the next few weeks are going to be a little interesting. I have made a car purchase that, that I will tell everybody about. I've, I've kind of talked about it here a little bit today. I'll, I'll spill all of the beans next week for all the listeners. So you want to make sure next week, two weeks. I'll, I'll spill the be- I'll spill the beans next week, okay. but I'm and then actually show picking it. it. I'm, okay. I'm I'm picking it. it. Don't say show it, Bruce. You're gonna you're gonna tell people what I got. That was an accidental thing. <laughs> that 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 yeah okay. I'll, I'll show people um, next week. I'm gonna pick it up in a couple weeks. It's a project, so you want to stay tuned for that, Matt. I might need your advice for tires on that vehicle. Because it's going to be a restoration project that I want as OEM as possible. And I think if I, if memory serves me, that car came with Goodyear Eagle GAs, 215, 60, 16. God, I know way too much technical Which info about these really cars. Challenging, really challenging size. <laughs> yeah. So but. I'll, I'll spill the beans on that. You want to follow us motor one podcast on YouTube. You always want to go to motor one.com. You can see our articles that go up every Friday. Of course, the podcast posts every Friday. You also can listen to us on Spotify, Google, over a dozen audio platforms. We finally broke the 300 subscriber mark. So we're going up slowly, but we need to do a bigger subscriber drive and bruce and i have talked about drinking some more hot sauce we're game for that so we'll talk about that next week but wait wait hold on Uh, okay i'm doing my spiel bruce come on i know but let's give matt his you know tire com is kind of that's where people can find you yes to tell tell everybody where they need to go to get the best damn tires that they can get very simple tire com okay and you guys, like we've said during the show, you guys are great. You have fantastic customer service. You can call or live chat with people and ask for tire recommendations, you know, kind of like we did during this show. We said you tell them what car you have, what you're going to do with it, which is obviously, you know, your analogy about shoes is kind of the thing that mm. some people need boots. Some people need sneakers like sure. that one's not better than the other. It's just what you're going to do with the vehicle. And so, yeah. Um, but Matt, thank you so much for joining us. We super, super appreciate it. You've been a fantastic guest. Um, it's been, you know, over a month in the making, but it's fantastic to finally get to talk to you. Uh, and then as always for our show, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. We appreciate everyone who listens. We appreciate everyone who comments. Um, right now, uh, it'll be Smith and I next week. Uh, unless, you know, who knows, sometimes guests come up and things change, but right now, as of this recording, it'll be Smith and I next week. And so any of the comments and stuff we got, we'll be hitting that then. Um, but yeah, uh, Matt Smith, thank you guys so much for being on the show. And I think that's it for tonight. So that's it. We'll talk to everybody later. Drive safe.